greetings welcome to module 3 unit 9 on vision mission and program educational objectives part 1 in the earlier unit we understood what a teacher can do in her instructional situation with that unit we completed the discussion about instruction now we will commence detailed discussion of all the 10 criteria of SAR both for tier 1 and tier 2 institutes. So, in this unit we look at criterion 1 which is concerned with vision, mission and PEOs of the department. The outcome for this unit is understand the nature of vision, mission and PEOs of the department. We will look at sub criteria 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3 in this unit. We will look at the remaining two sub criteria that is 1.4 and 1.5 in the next unit. A quick recap of the 10 criteria of the SAR, we looked at this table in module 1, we can see that there are 10 criteria and this is true for both tier 1 and tier 2 institutes. The total marks also remain same for both types of institutes. We have 1000 marks for tier 1 as well as for tier 2 institute. The number of criteria is also same. However, the individual marks allocated to different criteria may differ for tier 1 institute from those of tier 2 institute. They may remain same or they could be different. For example, for the criterion 5, the marks is 200 for tier 1 as well for tier 2 institutes. However, for criterion 1, 50 marks are allocated for a tier 1 institute while for tier 2 institute it is 60 marks. So, there can be some differences between a tier 1 institute and a tier 2 institute. Each criteria has several sub criteria also. The number of sub criteria under a given criterion and marks allocated to them may be different for tier 1 institute from those of tier 2 institute. For each sub criterion certain exhibits context are to be observed and assessed by the visiting team. Department must have the required exhibits ready for assessment by the visiting team. It is very important that the required exhibits are properly indexed for easy retrieval. The department can choose any convenient indexing mechanism, but it must be able to retrieve the required document very quickly. The criterion 1 is concerned with vision, mission and program educational objectives that is PEOs of the program for which accreditation is being sought. This particular criterion, its sub criteria, the required processes and the exhibits are all the same for both tier 1 and tier 2 institutes. However, the allocation of marks is different. There are 5 sub criteria 1.1 to 1.5. 1.1 state the vision and mission of the department and institute. 5 marks for tier 1 as well as for tier 2. 1.2 state the PEOs, 5 marks for tier 1 and 5 marks for tier 2. 1.3 indicate where and how the vision, mission and PEOs are published and disseminated among stakeholders. Here there are 15 marks for a tier 1 institute while there are only 10 marks for a tier 2 institute. 1.4 state the process 
for defining the vision and mission of the department and PEOs of the program. 15 marks for a tier 1 institute while it is 25 marks for a tier 2 institute. 1.5 establish consistency of PEOs with mission of the department. It is 10 marks for a tier 1 institute while it is 15 marks for a tier 2 institutes. Thus, the total under criterion 1 for a tier 1 institute is 50 marks while it is 60 marks for a tier 2 institute. Now, let us look at the sub criterion 1.1 which is state the vision and mission of the department and institute. Allocation of marks is same for both tier 1 and tier 2 institutes. The guidelines for evaluation are that the department must make available to the visiting team the vision and mission statements of the department. It carries one mark. Appropriateness relevance of the statements 2 marks, consistency of the department statements with the institute statements 2 marks, a total of 5 marks. The exhibits context to be observed and assessed, availability of the vision and mission statements of the department, the statements should be available. The second guideline is that the statements must be appropriate and relevant. The visiting team examines the correctness from the definition perspective. It is subjective evaluation by the visiting team. So, the statements must be reasonable and relevant. This is evaluated by the visiting team based on their subjective perception of the quality of the vision and mission statements. The third guideline is to examine the consistency of the department statements with the institute statements. This is again based on the subjective perception of the visiting team. Now, let us look at the vision and mission statements of the department. The visions represents the aspirations of the department, where the department wants to see itself down the road may be after 5 to 6 years. Growth is implied in the vision. This is in the sense that the department finds itself at one level and it wants to see itself at a higher level after certain period of time. That means, that the department envisions growth and in the vision statement it is better to avoid very heavy and flowery words like world class excellence. It is not that these phrases are to be banned altogether, but the vision statement must be realistic. It is certainly the dream of the department. They do represent the aspirations of the department. However, the vision must be realistic. In general, it is better to avoid two flowery phrases. Typically, the vision is represented in one sentence or two sentences at most. It should be brief and crisp and the vision must result from a well defined and recorded process. We look at the process for defining the vision subsequently. Vision is where the department wants to be in the future. Mission is what the department does to get there. So, the mission represents the specific plans for realizing the vision. Typically, mission can be expressed in 2 to 4 sentences. As with vision statement, 
it is better to avoid flowery phrases like global excellence. If the department is at a fairly advanced level and if it feels capable of reaching the global standards, it is okay to include such phrases. Otherwise, generally it is better to avoid flowery phrases. Mission also must result from a well defined and a recorded process. We will discuss again later the process for defining the mission of the department. Vision and mission of the department must be consistent with the vision and mission of the institute. That is the reason that the SCR includes the statement of the vision and mission of the institute also in criterion 1. However, the vision and mission of the institute are included here only to check whether the vision and mission of the department are consistent with the vision and mission of the institute. The evaluation of the quality of the vision and mission statements of the institute is addressed in criterion 10. So, in this criterion the vision and mission of the institute are not evaluated. They are included here only to enable the visiting team to check whether the vision and mission of the department are consistent with the vision and mission of the institute. Samples of vision and mission statements. There is considerable variation in the vision and mission statements of departments and institutes. They depend on the specific context in which the institute is functioning and the specific capabilities of the department concerned. So, they do vary considerably. Such a variation is to be expected as the aspirations and context of different departments and institutes do differ significantly. The samples presented here are from some of the accredited programs as reported in the websites of those institutions. These are being presented here for illustrative purposes only. This is not to say that these are the best statements nor to say that they are very poor statements, but these are the statements of accredited programs. The first sample, the vision of the institute to become a leading engineering institute by providing quality technical education and research with professional ethics. Mission of the institute is expressed in four different statements. We can see that the vision of the institute is expressed in a single sentence. The mission of the institute is expressed in four statements. The first statement is concerned with quality education system. The second one is about an ecosystem that encourages research. The third statement is concerned with industry institute interface and the fourth statement is very specific to the context of that institute. It says to enhance educational opportunities to the rural and weaker sections of the society. This is specific to the context in which the institute is operating. Now, let us look at the vision and mission of the department. Vision of the department to be recognized as a premier center in the field of mechanical engineering education and research that produces competent engineers. Mission of the department is captured in three statements. The first statement is concerned with technical education through effective teaching learning processes. The second mission statement deals with research. The third mission statement is concerned with industry institute interface. So, you can examine what is the extent to which 
the vision and mission of the department are consistent with the vision and mission of the institute. Another sample vision of the institute is to be a premier technical institute in the country that imparts innovation driven engineering education to nurture value based competent future professionals. We can see that this statement is slightly more elaborate than the statement presented in the previous sample. Mission of the institute, the institute is committed to put well directed and honest efforts through teamwork for molding young minds into ethical professionals and the growth of all stakeholders. You can see that there is a substantial difference between the mission statement of this institute and the mission statements represented in the previous slides of the previous institute. Vision of the department to produce quality civil engineers with the knowledge of latest trends and research technologies to meet the developing needs of industry and society. Mission of the department to impart quality education in line with quality teaching learning process that is the first statement dealing with the quality education. The second mission statement deals with an environment that encourages and supports innovative research and development. The third mission statement again deals with industry academia interface. So, these are typical samples that one can find on the websites of some of the accredited programs. The sub criteria 1.2 requires the department to state the PEOs. Allocation of marks is same for both tier 1 and tier 2 institutes. The evaluation guidelines listing of the program educational objectives 3 to 5 of the program under consideration for 5 marks. So, the department must have a list of the PEOs of the program for which accreditation is being sought and the number of PEOs can be between 3 and 5. The exhibits context to be observed and assessed the availability and correctness of the PEO statements. Availability means that the list is available. The correctness of the PEO statements is based on the subjective evaluation by the visiting team. PEOs are what the graduates of the program are expected to achieve within 4 to 5 years of completing the program. The number of PEOs should be between 3 and 5. PEOs also must result from a well defined and recorded process. Notice that the vision of the department, the mission of the department and the PEOs of the program must all result from a well defined recorded process. We have already discussed PEOs in module 1 unit 6, a sample from that unit is reproduced here. Graduates of BE in electrical and electronics engineering program 4 years after graduation will engage in designing, manufacturing, testing, operating and or maintaining systems in the field of electrical and electronics engineering and allied engineering industries. This is the first PEO. This is followed by 3 more PEOs. The second PEO deals with solving problems of social relevance. The third PEO is concerned with working effectively as individuals as well as team members. The fourth PEO talks about lifelong learning. So, this is a typical sample of the PEOs of a department. Sub criteria 1.3 indicate 
where and how the vision, mission and PEOs are published and disseminated among stakeholders. The allocation of marks is different for tier 1 and tier 2 institutes. There are three guidelines for evaluation. Adequacy in respect of publication and dissemination, process of dissemination among the stakeholders and extent of awareness of vision and mission and PEOs among the stakeholders. So, there are three guidelines. The marks for a tier 1 institute are different from the marks for a tier 2 institute. The marks for the three guidelines are 3, 3 and 9 totaling 15 for a tier 1 institute. They are 2, 2 and 6 totaling 10 for a tier 2 institute. The first exhibit to be assessed by the visiting team is concerned with the adequacy of dissemination of vision, mission and PEOs of the department. It is very important that all the stakeholders are familiar with the vision, mission and PEOs of the department. So, it must be available it must be disseminated among all the stakeholders. Some of the ways by which these can be disseminated among the stakeholders are shown here. They can be made available on the institute website under the relevant program link. They can be displayed on the notice boards of the departments. They can be displayed prominently in the chamber of the HOD as well as in the faculty rooms. They can also be displayed in the laboratories, classrooms, library and seminar hall of the department. They can be displayed on the department website if one is available. In the department level documents, course study including test booklets, laboratory records etcetera also one can make these three statements available. The vision, mission and PEOs can be printed in the department level documents also. The next evaluation guideline is concerned with the process of dissemination. Documentary evidence to indicate the process which ensures awareness among internal and external stakeholders with effective process implementation. Internal stakeholders may include management, members of bodies like governing board, academic council, faculty, support staff, students etcetera. External stakeholders may include alumni, employers, industry etcetera. We need a process for disseminating vision, mission and PEOs among the stakeholders. The stakeholders change. New students join the institute every year. New faculty and support staff join the institute. Members of governing body, academic council may change. So, the stakeholders change over a period of time. The new stakeholders also must be familiar with the vision, mission and PEOs of the program. Thus, we need a process which ensures such dissemination. A process must be established and implemented to ensure that the information regarding vision, mission and PEOs is disseminated periodically and also when the stakeholders change. A department level committee must be constituted to ensure such timely dissemination of the information. An internal quality assurance cell if it exists can coordinate with the committee in this regard. Records of communication must be maintained. There are some considerations 
common to any process in the context of SER. We will discuss these common considerations of the notion of a process in the next unit. The third guideline is to assess the extent of awareness. This is based on the interaction that the visiting team will have with internal and external stakeholders. It is essential that all the stakeholders are well aware of the vision, mission and PEOs of the department. Such an awareness must get reflected clearly during the interactions with the visiting team. While the visiting team is interacting with the stakeholders, the stakeholders must be able to articulate clearly their understanding of the vision, mission and PEOs. It would be helpful if the department discusses its vision, mission and PEOs in all its periodic meetings with the stakeholders. This will ensure that the stakeholders become confident of expressing their perceptions regarding vision, mission and PEOs. It ensures that the awareness of vision, mission and PEOs is high among all the stakeholders. Two exercises for you. Comment on the samples of vision, mission and PEOs provided in this presentation. Indicate the vision and mission of our institute and the vision, mission and PEOs of your department. PEOs will be for the specific program for which accreditation is being sought. Thank you for sharing the results of the exercise at nata.iacta at gmail.com. In the next unit, we will continue with criterion 1 of SAR. The outcome for the next unit would be understand the process for defining the vision, mission and PEOs of the program for which accreditation is being sought. This is elaborated in sub criteria 1.4 and 1.5 of the criterion 1 of SCR. Thank you.